Mr. Marcus Payne out there in that lovely little sermon. That's that big old handle sand propeller front turning all that horsepower into thrust. Now the steering the PT-17, depending on the engine front of the aircraft, PT-15, PT-70, PT-18. This PT-17 came out of the factory about 1941 with a Continental 670 cubic inch radial engine front, cranking out 220 horsepower. If you learn to fly during World War II, well, I'll guarantee you spent time in the backseat of a PT-17 steering wheel, but putting around. Now, steering wheel will have to win competition for the primary said, hey, the Sturman's harder to land, so we're going to pick that. So instead of choosing Waka, they chose the Boeing PT-17 Sturman for a trainer aircraft. This airplane has been converted from a 220 horsepower Continental to an R-985, that's 985 cubic inches of horsepower, cracking out 450 horsepower through the Hamilton Standard Prop. Inside an airplane, up road top, see the nice big old round barnstormer loop for us here this morning. There's a twig sticking up there. That's actually the trapeze. The wind walking demonstration. Now, Marcus is an Alaskan aviator legend. He also has a school up there where he teaches unusual attitudes in aircraft such as the Palenka, the Catalogs. He's recently trained in the unusual attitude for curbing the soft spin awareness and the tail wheel for pilots in the U.S. Army, National Park Service, the Civil Air Patrol, Alaska State Troopers, and for the flight inspection of the FAA Flight Standards District Office. Now, he calls Alaska's home, but he also comes down to Arizona in the summertime. Well, actually, in the wintertime for him down in Arizona. And does the same school, a satellite school down in Arizona, in the Tucson area. Uh, he and his training partner, of course, Patty Wagstaff, provided the same training in Kenya to pilots of the Kenyan Wildlife Service, who daily face low out. Now you see Mark's out there pulling the airplane up, making all 450s work, what he's work for him up there. That's that hammerhead right back down there, show center for us. Now Mark is EMT qualified. He's a member of the National Ski Patrol. He's been patrolled regularly in Alaska during the winter months for many years while he wasn't flying and instructing. Now he spends the winters in a satellite location, like I said, down unusual altitudes in Arizona. Now Mark is highly qualified. Now this guy, he holds airplane fixed wing ratings and endorsement and instructor certificates through multi-engine instrument. He's an active aerobatic performer as well. He's performed aerobatic routines in Alaska air shows throughout that state, including the Valdez Air Show, the Arctic Thunder, and El Elmador Air Force Base. The past 10 years, he's been a crowd favorite out there doing these air shows in a Super Decathlon and a Super Cub. He flies a factory American champion aircraft, which is Decathlon. Now that smoke system all that crap, don't worry about it. Also, everybody pops have some kind of smoke system on the airplane. What that is, somewhere inside that aircraft, there is a fuel tank. Now they got a switch somewhere on the stick, on the throttle, maybe on the panel. They flip the switch, turns on a fuel pump. That fuel pump pumps that smoke oil out of the tank. It's the aircraft and it turns it up to like You're gonna get a whiff of it. It's coming this way. It doesn't smell that bad, but it won't hurt you. It's a tight, low-level turn for us. Now the 
150 horsepower stable. Well, starting light as a 220 Continental front. It only had ailerons on the lower wing of the aircraft. That's what Ken Pete's lost off of his airplane. They only had one on each side of the aircraft, on the lower side. Most of the airplanes were converted after the war, as it was a warbird aircraft, to a four aileron, putting jury studs in it. They did that, it gave them better roll control of the aircraft, a little harder to stick at high speeds. They also turned these aircraft into crop dusting airplanes. They put a hopper inside the airplane, another type of fuel tank, and they would spray bars upon the wing and go out and spray crops with the airplane. Then after war, you could pick up a steering like this, a stock salmon for less than a thousand dollars. A thousand bucks is just about buy the tires on one today. And that bark you hear is that big old Hamilton sand propeller in front of that 985 track when he transmitting all that horsepower into thrust. And you will see Marcus come back later in the program and say demonstrate the wind walking routine with the lovely Carol Pilon on top of the aircraft. <laughs>